Journey to the West, written during the Ming Dynasty in the late 16th century, is one of the four main Chinese literary classics. This epic novel follows the pilgrimage of a Buddhist monk and his disciples. So gather round, folks, for a tale that's so boring it's actually riveting. Ever heard of a high-ranking celestial being turned pigman? No? Then put down that bacon sandwich and let's dive into a swintastic story that's got more twists than a pig's tail. Hey everyone, welcome to Learn Chinese Now. I'm Jared Madsen, and we will be talking about Pigsy. But before the world came to know the quirky character named Pigsy, there was a grand narrative unfolding in the heavens. Our story starts not with Pigsy, but with a monkey. Enter Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. Bursting with unmatched agility, wit sharper than the latest TikTok trend, and a mischievous flair, the Monkey King was quite the celestial celebrity. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, he kind of broke into the heavens and beat up everyone. Okay, back to the story. However, his rebellious streak led him to the heavens themselves. Yet in the grand tapestry of fate, he would eventually find himself under the mentorship of the Buddhist monk, Tang San Zhang, looking for redemption. Redemption after beating up a bunch of heavenly guards. Got it. Monk Tong's aura was different, with an air of serenity and a mission of cosmic importance. Monk Tong was on a divine journey to travel to the West to retrieve the sacred Buddhist scriptures that held the wisdom of the ages. From malevolent spirits and crafty demons seeking to obstruct the divine mission, to treacherous terrains that had claimed many travelers, the journey was, in every sense, a trial by fire. Now, for Pigsy, his story doesn't start on Earth, it starts in the heavens. Why? Because he was a celestial being. So, before everybody knew him as Pigsy, he was known as Marshal Tianpeng, Tianpeng Yuan Shuai. So, you can basically think of him as Thor in Chinese mythology. However, during a high profile event in the exclusive Heavenly Peach Garden, think the OG Celestial VIP Lounge, he did something that's considered a major no-no. Now, before we get into that, just imagine you've got this massive banquet. You have the Jade Emperor there, Yu Huang Da Di. He's in charge of everything. And you have beautiful goddesses and bodhisattvas and all of that. You also had the Princess of the Moon. Ah, the Princess of the Moon. Well, let's just say that Pigsy forgot about the don't look, don't touch policy when he met the Princess of the Moon. Roopsie doo. From that point, the Jade Emperor, Yu Huang Da Di, a figure embodying justice and wisdom, he wasn't having any of that. As punishment, he thought it would be a fitting irony to turn this once majestic marshal into a pig man and drop him like a bad connection onto Earth. So basically, the Jade Emperor thought, okay, uh, we have this marshal who's a big ball of lust what should I do? Oh, I know, I'm going to turn him into a lustful pig. I'm going to throw him down to earth and uh, we'll call him Pigsy. And his name is Zhu Ba Jie. So his surname, his family name Zhu means pig. Yes, that's right. His name is pig. Okay. And then Ba Jie means eight precepts, or uh, that connects to Buddhism. So the eight things that he needs to follow. His newfound physique was stout, a far cry from his six-pack days. He had a distinct pig snout, floppy ears that would make Dumbo jealous, and protruding tusks. So basically, after he went down to earth, was he a pig? Yes. But he was from the heavens. Therefore, he brought with him some armor that was heavenly armor. Yeah, try piercing that with your spear. Pigsy also had his weapon, which he brought with him from the heavens. It was called the Nine Toothed Rake. So basically, you can think a rake. Um, 
but it was super magical. After his rather unfortunate fall from grace and subsequent transformation, Pigsy's life had turned into a blur of mundane activities and bumbling misadventures. I wouldn't expect much more from a pig who fell from heaven, but soon Pigsy's life had a turn for the better. One day, Monk Tong and the Monkey King were heading towards their destination, going to find the scriptures, and uh, they happened upon the Gao village. This village was stuck in a peculiar situation. Why? because one of the elder's daughters was kidnapped and there was some whispers about this guy pig thing named Pigsy who had promised that, that he would make the town like amazing and prosperous for the hand and marriage of the girl. But you want to know what? Um, he's a pig. So he just kind of ate all the food and the village suffered immensely and they wanted to get rid of this pig guy. Monkey King, who comes along, he says, you wanna know what, that's it. I'm gonna give this pig a whooping. I might be a monkey, but you wanna know what, I ain't afraid of no pig. So he goes and he starts fighting Higsey. But before the fight went too far, Bodhisattva Guanyin came down from the heavens, revealing that there is a deeper design behind the Monkey King's presence there. Guanyin's intervention served as a turning point, not just resolving the immediate conflict, but in solidifying the bonds of the group. Manifesting redemption, Pigsy was accepted as Monk Tong's student and joined the members on the journey. But as they ventured through treacherous mountains, crossed vast deserts, and faced their inner demons, every member started to grow and learn and evolve. Pigsy, from a disgraced celestial being, began to find honor and bravery within his piggy heart. Their journey became the stuff of legends, a testament to friendship, redemption, and the ideal that the most unlikely of teams can achieve the most monumental of tasks. Hey, so if you guys like that, like and subscribe, do the whole thing. Also, I am the MC for Shenyun Performing Arts, the world's premier classical Chinese dance company. And virtually every year, we have a dance about Journey to the West. So if you want to see Pigsy come to life on stage, I have left a link in the description below that has the booking fee waived on any tickets you buy to the show. And if you're watching this and we are not on tour, hey, no problem. Check out Shenyun Zuopian or Shenyun Creations. I've also left a link to that in the description below. All right, see you next time. 再见!